Coast Stone Podcast. So I want to welcome everybody to the uh, po- Coach Stone Football Podcast, podcast number three. I have a special guest. This guest is also my first overseas football coach for the Coach Stone podcast. So what I want to do is tell my viewers the game plan of the podcast again. If you are a first-time listener, we start with the pregame. That will be when the guest tells a little thing about them. We'll have a kickoff question. We'll have a first drive. We'll have a halftime with a little marching band going. We'll come back from halftime, get a water break, do a kick return a second drive, the two-minute warning will be a two-minute or two- to five-minute thing where our guest will leave a words of wisdom with you, and then we'll have an end of the game. And if we want to, and the guest wants to stay on for overtime, we can do that. Before I introduce my guest, I want to say thank you for everyone listening to the Coach Stone podcast. Uh, I want to thank J.C. Hawks Radio, J.C. Hawks Sports Network for having me do this. Uh, And I want to thank, again, my wife for letting me take time out of our busy schedule with our five kids to do this. So without further ado, my guest at this time, Coach John Wise. John, are you on the phone? Hi, Coach. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm really good, thanks. And say hello to your wife for, for me and to the, to the Stone Five. I, I, I will. And make sure you tell your wife and your kids. Now let me ask you a question. I mean, I, don't, I know this is a Coach Stone podcast. We talk only football, right? Has, has yep. the oldest watched the new Star Wars movie? She hasn't, but she's. Um, she's. She, we're talking every day as as we do the school run about her being a Padawan and uh, learning to Perfect. become a Jedi Knight. So she's. Uh, she's. She's got a Padawan name now. Uh, awesome. So all awesome. cool. I want to make sure. And is she is she teaching the ways of the Force to the little one? I hope. Or is she's. That your she's. Go, she's probably gonna come into that in a in a little while. She's only um, 20 months old now, so uh, she's still okay. got a bit of growing to do before we get into that sort of stuff. Okay, perfect. And, and do me a favor, tell your wife I said hi. I know she's probably going to laugh at us because the first thing <laughs> we talked about was Star Wars. So I know she's a gigantic Star Wars fan, right? <laughs> oh, she hates she hates it. Harry Potter's her thing, and uh, and she she does, but she does laugh at me an awful lot. I think I, she, I think she laughs with me, but I think she's really laughing at me. So wait, she's a she's a Harry Potter fan, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So what happens if we do a crossover movie? You know, they're doing these all these other crossover movies. What about Harry Potter and Star Wars? And they come together. Would she uh, watch that? Uh, I don't. I don't think Disney are going to take over Universal in the in the next few months. So I'm um, not sure if that's going to happen. But <laughs> I think I think that would be the that would be the only way. Or or hey. I get the two the two girls that's so into it that she has to go. You know what? I'll just I'll give it a go and I'll uh, hey. I'll give in. I, I don't know if you watched The Simpsons, but I know they said something on The Simpsons. They had all these things that happened back in the day in The Simpsons episodes. And one of the things right, okay. they said they were going to buy Fox, right? So now that's right. And they did. this podcast, podcast number three, could be we just said that Disney was going to buy Universal Studios, right, or Universal. So if that happens 10 years from now, we just <laughs> – You heard it here first. On. Yeah, right. All right. Yeah. So um, I, I didn't mean to go in that right away. I apologize. But uh, let's do this, okay, John? The uh, yeah. listeners. Uh, I don't know how many listeners we have right now. We probably like I know Coach Coach Hines said we probably had four, maybe five. Hopefully, we'll have maybe six or seven now. Maybe we'll have some UK more UK listeners too. But uh, pretty much, we're just gonna go over the game plan. Pre-game, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Kick off one question. First drive a question. Halftime. Kick return. Second drive, two minute warning, end of game, and if we want to go to overtime, okay, John. So the pregame is going to start. So pregame, John Wise, United Kingdom. Let's tell the listening viewers. Make sure you too, after you're done talking, uh, introducing yourself. Please give them your Twitter if you want them to follow you and things like that. Uh, but the floor is yours, Coach. Go. Okay. So as you can tell from my from my accent, um, although I don't think I have an accent, um, I don't I'm, think I'm you do. The, I don't think you do. I'm from the I'm from the UK, so. Um, so uh, a, a place in the, in the Midlands, so about 150 miles north of London, uh, called Stoke-on-Trent. Um, I'm not from that part of the world. I'm from from the, the south coast, uh, but I live up here with my with my wife and two daughters. 
Um, I, as well as being a football coach, which I'll come back to in just a second, I, I work in education and have done um, since I've left education. So I've not really gone out into the real world, which is which is quite good. Um, and I work on a sporting excellence course. So we run a qualification um, in association with several national governing bodies of sport. So basketball, England, England boxing, British fencing, British judo. Uh, we do a little bit of work with the Rugby Football Union, uh, the 15-a-side game, uh, Table Tennis England, and British Wheelchair Basketball. So I basically travel around the country uh, working with um, talented young athletes between the age of 18 and uh, 16 and 18, 16 and 19, um, and, and work really closely with their coaches. And, and on that course, um, I get a chance to work with some really high-performing players. Uh, we get loads of, loads of young athletes. Um, in basketball in particular who go to the States and, and you know get scholarships over there either academic ones or we, we have several who've gone to Div 1 and, and one guy that played in the NBA Summer League this year um, and we have other guys that, that go on and you know represent the, the, the country at, at the Olympics uh, we had a couple of guys we had four guys out, out, out in Rio for the Olympics and Paralympics uh, back in 2016 so that's what I do in my day job uh, in my in my football job although it's a uh, it's a very much a, a volunteer um, basis in which uh, British American football operates. Um, I've just become the coach of the local team, the Staffordshire Surge. So a big shout out to, to the Surge and anyone that I can convince to listen into this. I know I've got a couple of guys that are chomping at the bit, waiting for this to come out. And so they'll give this a bit, a bit of a listen so they get to understand a bit more about me and my approach. Um, but for the last, I guess, 20 plus years I've been a, a player and, and, and a player coach um, you know I, I, I picked the game up in, in the mid 80s uh, when it really bloomed for the first time in the UK when there was nothing else on the, the TV on a Sunday evening and we used to get a, a highlight show an hour and a quarter highlight show which is a week behind uh, the actual NFL games I I picked up Armed Forces Radio uh, in amongst the Spanish broadcasts and was, you know, an avid listener at three o'clock in in the morning, listening to to Bo Jackson and Marcus Allen destroying the Seahawks, or Marcus Allen destroy, uh, sorry, Bo Jackson destroying uh, Brian Bosworth on that Monday night right. game, uh, being 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 led by uh, Marcus Allen and and uh, you know was was just a massive NFL fan, and and then it's it's just a sport that's just got into my skin. And it's it's kind of part of my DNA. It's just I don't I think all the experiences I've had in my life, all the most positive ones, have been um, because of football, you know. And, and there's been some moments of, of adversity, which is you know I think has made me the person I am today. But it's you know it's a sport that I've just grown to love, and uh, and just you know just everything I do has some kind of football link to it. Again, which uh, which my wife and family are very understanding. They they know that's that's who I am. That's all I do. Um, and yeah, so that's that's basically me. I've, I've I played for the GB national team um, on a couple of occasions over a variety of years. I've, I was, I guess, I, I'm probably a bit grandiose to say I was was a Heisman Trophy winner. We have a colleges league, a uh, university league, and I was the first ever league MVP for that back in the uh, early 90s, which kind of dates me and gives away my age a little bit. Um, and, and I've also sort of played for a national championship winning team uh, again in our amateur league. Uh, so, so the team I played for, the PA Knights, we we won the Brit Bowl uh, back in 2004, and I was the, the game MVP for that. So I've had kind of a, a bit of a, I guess, a stellar and, and, and a long career as a player, and, and just more recently have just transitioned into um, becoming a, a coach. And I wouldn't say that I've stopped playing. I've kind of gone on a sabbatical. I've registered for the team as a player coach. Does that yeah. makes no difference to the to the cost of the, the fee that I have to pay to do that. Um, and it covers my license and insurance and various other things. Um, but, you know, I think one of the things I'm certainly looking for as we get into our pre-season, as we approach our, our season, is sometimes it's a case of do we have enough bodies to play, um, in which case I might put the kit on. But, you know, one of my success criteria this year is if I do not have to play, then, then that's a success. You know, I, I, it's a probably cheap, easy win for me to say, well, I'll get up and I'll play and do a variety of things that I know and understand. Um, the real challenge for me is to make sure that the players that I coach can do those things, and you know, and I can cope with the successes and failures that they have on the field, and you know, and, and manage that process uh, uh, appropriately. 
so that that's kind of a bit of a bit of my background again i feel very 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 fortunate that that i've i've been able to in sort of circulate with yourself and and lots of significant other coaches um part live part of that's come through my role as director of coaching within british american football and the british american football coaches association um you know we we've done you and i've done some work um with our national convention and and that was great to get you and a few other coaches um across and and again you know i've I've kind of touched base with several other coaches um i I feel like i should name drop a few but but for fear of of missing a few out um i'll 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 only i'll only talk about um, al saunders a a fellow brit who has obviously been in the nfl Um, i think i think he's still at cleveland uh, the Cleveland Browns. Um, not too short, but he was at the Raiders. He was a San Diego Chargers head coach, coach back in the day. Um, who else? Jeff Collins, who's at Temple University, is head coach there. Um, and, and you know, again, that's just the, the developing networks that the the British game has with with the USA. You know, we have loads of guys. I was I was chatting on Facebook um, a little while ago to Rich Rich Wurzel, who's a coach at Laverne um, College in 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 california um and again you know rich and i sort of hook up occasionally and he yeah. he pops back here and uh and we have we have some discussions and uh, you know i'm constantly learning from him so i have a i feel i have a massive network of people to kind of draw upon and uh and get information from and and i think one of the things i'm most excited about as, as, I, as I become the, the, the coach of the team is you know trying to put that all together with what i know and understand about learning and, and athlete development um in in a way that you know is is has got my own sort of mark on it rather than just copying what i see which is really good practice um but just you know i'm very aware that the the environment and the culture in which which i operate um is is you know is not quite the same as you might see in in the us for example Mm -hmm. now the one thing the one you uh, why don't you tell all our listeners like your twitter if they want to follow you and things like that and if you're not following John Wise, I'm going to tell you right now, we met a couple of years ago through Sarah and Phoebe, and I want to thank those two ladies especially because that was the starting point to get us to where we're at, where how me and John became part of the football family I always talk about. But why don't you tell us, the listeners, uh, what's your Twitter if they want to follow you, Coach? Yeah, that's a big, I mean, a big shout out to Sarah Jaunty, who actually has, has come back to actively coach with, with a team was, that I'm coaching yeah. with, which is, which, is, which is awesome. You know, I've got, I've got a lot of respect for her. And, and Phoebe Schechter, some of your listeners might be familiar with the name. She was actually a coaching intern with the Buffalo Bills um, in pre-season. So, you know, she was following the footsteps of, of Jen Welter and, and various other female coaches. Well, she's not, she's a female who coaches. Um, you know, just like Sarah, she's just a coach who just, who's just happens to be female. They're both awesome, awesome people. But in terms of c- catching me on Twitter, um, my my Twitter handle is at Coach Wise, um, which is spelled Coach and then W Y S E. Um, so you can you can hook up with me that way. Um, I don't I don't use it an awful lot, but I do check it every two or three days. I, I tend to retweet more stuff than I than I send out my own original stuff at the moment. Um, and that's mm-hmm. partly because I, I kind of selfishly use it as a way to um, collate all the great stuff that I, that I see. So, so if, you know, if, if I, I retweet one of your tweets or someone else's tweets, it's probably because I think there's some really good stuff there that I just want to put in my timeline so I can go back and review, you know, at some point when, when it's appropriate for me to do so. Um, so I use that my my email address. People can contact me that way. Is coach dot wise dot and then the number two, the word point, and then the number seven at gmail dot com. So um, I, I I've talked about and I guess I'm I'm branding what I do now as as the next evolution. So you know this is I've I've, I've been a head coach before 20 years ago and and a little bit more um with the same team actually or not with the same team with the same organization uh but now I feel like you know I've developed an awful lot so it's not version 2.0 it's version 2.7 which you know just mm-hmm. by pure coincidence is also the 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 playing number that that I kind of play in and have played in over the years um and then I also on Facebook I I tend to live on Facebook and um Please, Facebook, don't kick me off of, of your site for this. But I do have two coaching or two profiles. 
Um, there's, a, there's, there's a coaching John Wise, so J-O-N, uh, W-Y-S-E. And I think the username, which I think it will be in the show notes, um, is, is clockwise coaching. So just something I was playing around with a few years ago. Um, and, and my my avatar, my profile picture is a, is kind of a, an image of a coach with uh, with my name on it. Um, the other John Wise is, is kind of a personal one, but I, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy to, to connect uh, using that if if, if, if that's if that's suitable for for whoever. So you know, and, and again, I think. As I as I said to some of the guys I chat with, you know, I, I I I double team them. I connect with both profiles so they can get hold of me when when it's it's best for them. You know, certainly the players on the team, you know, they they've got access to both so that they can um, not get me twenty four seven, but they can certainly contact me and I'll see their message and then I can respond however else. So yeah, I'm I'm quite happy to to interact and share stuff and uh, you know um, I'm 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 always looking to to share the best stuff that I get access to or to, you know, just throw stuff out there and see what people think just to, you know, to, and to challenge, challenge what we all do to challenge and stretch and, and help us all develop. Awesome. Yeah. And here's the other thing too, if you want, what I'll do is we'll put your information when we, when we share it out social media, we'll put little links underneath if you want coach wise and we'll, we'll send them so they can just go there too. Cause if they're listening to you, they might be writing it down and then they have to replay it, light it down. But if you want, we can put it on your, tw- we can put the Twitter up there and things like that. And the one thing, you know, a couple of things that you talked about when you talked about the pregame. So before we go to that quick off question, the one thing I wanted to ask you with the, with the, with the, all the sports you're doing right now, and you talk about Olympic sports and playing in the college, is there a way a college coach could, should a college coach contact you and ask you, Hey, do you have the next like basketball overseas guy? Can they do that, or are they not allowed to do that? I, 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 to, to be honest, because of the role that I have, I'm, I'm more about, at the moment, supporting coaches who, who deal with these athletes. So although, although there's a, a, an awesome network and um, there's, there's an awesome league called the EABL, the Elite Academy Basketball League, and the WEABL, the Women's Elite Academy Basketball League, they do mm. an awesome job of sharing um, weekly, weekly highlights um, using using crossover the, the performance analysis uh, uh, software and there are uh, other performance analysis softwares out there as well just you know to to be equitable to everybody um, but they do a good breakdown of, of plays of the week and performance of the week and I, and I think you know again the, the coaches that that work um, in that space with the basketball athletes in particular you know they're they're, they're guys and, and and girls that coach our GB under 20s team, the, the GB under 18s, the GB under 16s. So they're really integrated into the talent pathway. And again, we've got, a, you know, a steady flow of probably 30 to 40 athletes every year um, that, that go to the States and, you know, get off some kind of scholarship, academic or, or full sports scholarship every year. So there is, so I, so I wouldn't be able to probably, to answer your question, I wouldn't be able to talent spot and say who the great players are other than what I'd know by by the stuff I see it that's out there on social media. Um, but it's our coaches that, that certainly do that. And again, you know, if, if you are looking for some talented athletes, you know, and again, there's been multiple, numerous cases of, of athletes who have gone to the States from the UK and, you know, translated or transitioned from uh, basketball to football. So Menelik Watson, for example, um, I work closely with his former coach, um, a guy called Paul Middleton at Loretto College, and Paul and, and, uh, was amongst one of several coaches that coached uh, Menelik up in Manchester. Um, so you know he's obviously transitioned as a as an elite athlete from from a basketballer to a to a football guy, and, uh, and is doing well. You know, I really appreciated the uh, when we were out there with the, with the other three coaches I brought with me to United Kingdom. I really appreciated that one player. He played for he plays for the Saints right now. Um, you you remember his name, right? The one that plays right now for the Saints. You're gonna you're gonna bring up that playoff loss, aren't you? But yeah, I know I know Alex Jenkins really well. Um, yeah, Alex. Alex is, yeah, Alex is an outstanding young man. Um, yeah. Again, the the college I, I work at, which is which is based in Bristol. So if any of your listeners have got a map out, they go, "Hold on, this guy lives in Stoke, but works in Bristol." But I travel all around England, uh, not Wales and Scotland, as part of what I do. Um, it's just the course I run is a. Is, a, is an English-based course, but yeah, Alex is um, 
has uh, was was re-signed by the Saints for on a futures contract for next year. So he's back with them uh, certainly That's next awesome. next year's camp. But he's he's an outstanding young man that was in and around our American Football Academy that coached Ben Herod. Uh, big shout out to Ben. Um, he he's been working on for the last nine ten years actually, almost ten years now. Um, and has done an awesome job with with the academy there, which is probably the closest to a, to a US um, high school environment um, that, that Ben runs. But yeah, Alex has has, has done really well, and um, you know I, I got a chance to say hello to him at Wembley when the Saints came over to play the Dolphins in the international series game last year. Wasn't able to hook up with him outside of that, but you know he he was able to to wave and whilst he was being swamped by adoring fans who were after his autograph. But, you know, I, I, I chat with him occasionally and uh, we, we, we stay connected. So it's great to see him. And, yeah. you know, there are, there are several other UK sort of base guys who are, who are showing that they're athletes and, and that, you know, they're able to, to hold their own on the football field. And again, I think, I think that's just athletic development. The more and more I work with um, athletes and coaches in other sports, you know, I talk an awful lot to judo coaches about how you how you maintain grip, how you break balance, how you, you know, use someone else's momentum against them and, you know, those are all principles that, you know, as football coaches we we kinda use but we, we wrap them up in in other terminology. But it's basically human movement, isn't it? That's that's the key thing that we're all trying to maximize. Yeah, and here's the thing with Alex. Like we, when we were down there, he came. He like he, we were doing that youth, the last youth camp we were doing because we did a couple of youth camps for you down there. Mm. And the one thing I liked about him was, you know, is him going to the show. And I've never had an opportunity to go to the show. You know, my high school was indoor football, but seeing a person like that, humble, tell him, talk to the kids. You know, I mean, like, it, it's just phenomenal. And I know they had a tough break a couple of weeks ago. They. They they did not beat the uh, Minnesota Vikings, but you know, I have a funny feeling that you know with his work ethic and everything, and his ability and everything, he's going to be a great player for years to come, and it's just awesome. So, John, let's do this. Um, let's start with the kickoff question, okay? Kickoff question yep. I have was before I ask you about the, you know, the question. The question is going to be, you know, how do you like the challenges of with being a, a coach and a player, right? Because in America, I don't, I don't know if you guys have a hard time getting coaches or things like that, but, like, usually it's very hard to see a coach and player unless you're, like, in a low – like, a, when you're an adult, like a semi-pro level and things like that. You don't usually see a person playing for that, right? The question I have for you is, before, we, before you answer that question, what position do you play when you're in the Brit Bowl, uh, when you won your first MVP? What position did you play those two times? So I'm, I'm asked that question um, an, an awful lot and probably because I drop hints to the young athletes that I'm working with that I have an understanding of, of performance myself and I, and I challenge them to guess the sport that I'm into. Um, you know, the, and the common phrase, once, you know, once I tell them I'm an American footballer, they're like, aren't you a little bit, aren't you a little short to be an American footballer? Um, and then they go, what position do you play? And my response is always, I'm a footballer. I, I run, I block, I tackle. I, I, I also kick and punt and return kicks and punt. So I classify myself as a football player first, which probably uh, allows me to, to understand the, the game better, which is probably why, you know, as, as well as being a, 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 an education um, professional, I kind of gravitated towards coaching too. Um, but when I, was, when I was in the Brit Bowl, um, I was uh, a, a cornerback, um, but also a, a punter and kicker. Um, and when I was at, at the college MVP, I was actually playing quarterback. And that, that, that again, I, and I guess this influences my own philosophy as, as a coach. It, it was a case of I was our most experienced player um, on, on the team. Um, and, you know, it was kind of like, well, why don't I take every single snap? Because then I can help us make the best decisions, you know. And, and this is, you know, this is well before and I'm not claiming any credit here, well before the days of, you know, of, of RPO-based offenses, um, you know, or, or QBs that, that scrambled a lot. Although, you know, I, I, did, I did get inspired by the fact that Marcus Allen, who I've mentioned already, um, you know, he, he played QB when he was at high school and, and then converted into a, to a running back. But it was, it was simply a case of let's, let's get the ball in the hands of our best player, our most experienced, you know, and, and 
um, knowledgeable player, and, and then let's go from there. But you know, we we threw the ball a bit. I, I, we had some awesome guys that could take the, take it deep, um, and we had some guys that could run, and, and we did. We had other guys that that will ball out. So it, it's like one of those things, isn't it? Any any MVP award is is actually just validation of of the whole team rather than the individual you know and and i think i'm on record of saying at the brit bowl you know it, it, this is just i i get the credits but it's a, it's certainly a team game and and again kind of going back to the to the same scenario a little while back you know it's not one player that wins or loses the game it's it's, it's a team game it's the ultimate team game and again i think that's one of the the attractions and, and one of the reasons why i love it so much is uh, you know, we could yeah. probably, if, if, you know, we could probably, we'll, we'll touch base more about that game that happened a while ago, the Saints and the uh, Vikings. Oh, okay. do we have to? Do we have I, I to? Know, I mean, I again. I know the Saints. If the New Orleans Saints are listening to this podcast, you need to send John Wise or email him something because he's a huge Saints fan, but we'll talk about that later. Maybe I'll, we'll try to get this. We'll tag the Saints in this. Okay, so, John, the first question, the kickoff question, challenges with you coaching and playing. How, like, explain to the audience that are, you know, if you've never done it before, how hard is it? How easy is it? Do the players respond out? Like, for the viewing audience that are listening, and what they've got to realize, what I've already probably came to realize is you're a great man. You're very knowledgeable. You're a very great coach. You know, you surround yourself with good people, except for maybe me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, <laughs> totally you know, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, tell the audience. Like, tell them what it's like coaching and playing. Because I'm going to tell you right now, John, you know, I know you, you told me when I first met you, you're 21. Now you tell me you're coaching 21 year, 20 years. So you're not 21, so you're lying to me now. I'm 39. <laughs> there's no way, there's no way I'm going to put these pads on ever again. When I, when I my, my last game I played in Florida was an all-star game. I'm never mm. doing it again. So please tell the audience the challenge of that and how do you actually run a practice? Yeah, so I think I think again I think it's important that your that your listeners know that the the standard of, of football in the UK um is is very varied uh, I guess like it is everywhere but um it's it's still a very um it's still a very immature sport in terms of people come into it quite late so the average age that people take it up is probably about around 18 most of our athletes start playing the game at 18 and that's primarily to university um we, we kind of have a an upside down well not even an upside down pyramid but we have a, a very weird participation model um that, that's kind of evolved so i think as a as a teacher as a lecturer and, and i've and i've worked and, and i've taught in sport and physical education and sports science so i kind of have that natural affinity to kind of teach people to, to be physically better movers more efficient movers um and i think just just you know i i i don't think it's it's been an easy thing to kind of accept my age i i question it at times and that's not due to any any kind of medical issue that i've got or any kind of mental breakdown that i have but i kind of need to remind myself how old i am and i have to second guess and go am i really that old i don't really believe it <laughs> my uh my eldest my other sister came to a game a few years ago and she went you're crazy you're throwing yourself around like uh you know you're a 27 year old and you're you're in your early 40s john so just you know and i'm like yeah i know but i, but I could do it and i you know and, and i'm i'm game aware enough to know how to minimize the impact of big hits um you know and and, and i'd like to think that i'm technically okay that you know i can deliver the big hits in a in a safe or in a safer way as possible so you know come come monday when i have to get up to go to work you know i'm able to to kind of get in and, and not be suffering too much and uh yeah again i think i think it's um it's it's it, it's been a it's been a challenge um and i think sometimes certainly when i when i was first a, a, a player coach it was it was the challenge was not having the expectations of others that i had of myself you know i'm very very driven um and there's a whole backstory that maybe we can get into at some other time as to, as to why i play american football and why i do things the way i do um without getting on a psychiatrist count right now and, I, and i'm quite comfortable with with where i am and what i do by the way um 
But I think, yeah, it was understanding that, that different players do things in different ways and, and are driven by different motives and understanding why, why they're there playing this, this amateur sport in our country is, um, is, is a really important thing for, for me as a coach. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think the players around me um, appreciated the fact that I was knowledgeable because we would, we would make adjustments on the field uh, based, on, based on feeling, based on perception of, of what was going on, based on, you know, just that kind of gut instinct of, I think this is going to happen on this play. So, you know, as, as one of the, I guess, respected captain type players on the team, I was always quite happy to sort of say something and say, well, look out for this on this play. Or, you know, I've, I've studied the game plan and the, 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 what the coach has told us is to remember to do this thing. So, you know, and I think, and I think the best coaches I've worked with um, or the best head coaches um, whose teams I've played for have always kind of treated me as another coach and have kind of, you know, given me a bit of free reign to do stuff. So um, I, I guess a while back and even today, I, I have a bit of a reputation for, um, you know, taking off on, on fake punts and, uh, you know, and doing mm-hmm. that when when it's least expected, which, of course, is the best time to do it. Um, you know, we were playing a game in... Uh, in, in Austria several years ago when we were down at our 15-yard line um, coming out and forced down. And uh, as, as the ball came to me, I just saw green, you know, and it's like, I'm going. And uh, when, I, when I, I got the first down, so it's, it's always better to tell these stories when there's a, when there's a, a positive ending to them. But I, I went to the sideline and the coach was like, good, good one, John. And, and one of the other players came up to me and went, you do realise if you'd have messed that up, He'd have been all over you, and I was like, "No, he wouldn't," because this coach, this Steve Rains, so shout out to Coach Rains. Uh, Steve Rains understands me, and uh, and you know, and I, I I did it when I was playing for Steve's team in the Brit Bowl and took off on a fake punt in the fourth quarter, which allowed us to run the clock down a bit more um, Steve, to help secure you, the win. You just, you just did that right now, John. What you just did is every time you're on a punt team, they might they, they got to remember yell fake <laughs> whenever you're yeah, out there. Yeah, but that's cool because so that that's number. Stopped, they better be like, watch him, watch him for the fake punt. Yeah, and that's cool because obviously that takes a bit of the edge off the rush. So you know that allows <laughs> me to then kick the ball off. So it's all it's all it's all about setting setting the opponents up, isn't it? So um, yeah, so I think I think that's been a good thing. And again, with the with the with the best coaches that I've been part of their their staff um, and part of their teams, they've understood that, and you know they. You know, it's it's about trust, isn't it? Ultimately, and again, I I hark back to a to a to a, a Raiders story. You know, Todd Christensen in, in Super Bowl eighteen, you know, was open on a certain pattern, and he went to Tom Flores and said, "Throw it, throw it to me. I'm on. I'm open on this." And in the Super Bowl, Tom Flores was like, "Okay, trust you. You know, Mr. Third Down, let's go for it." And and although the play wasn't successful, it's the fact that the the coach was so trusting. And by the way, I think Tom Flores should be in the Hall of Fame. I've got to say that. Even though I'm a Saints fan now, I've seen the, I've seen the light and convert from the dark side. I think it's a cry of <laughs> shame he's not. Um, That's but great. I think it's, it's that. Sure. Yeah, I think you know, I think it's that. It's learning from those, you know, from those greats in in the sport and going. Yeah, I I want to be that that coach who you know who who trusts his players and who's who has helped his players understand what's going on to the point where if a player did something like that, as long as they could come to the sideline and say, this is what I thought, this is what I saw, and I did it with intention, then I'm totally, I, I hope I'm totally cool with that, you know, if it's the last yeah. play of the game or if it's whatever. So, so yeah, I think, I think I, that, that's part of it. I think there's a, a, an element of, of frustration um, to, to, to that as well. And again, I'm, I'm totally calm and at peace with having an element of frustration because there are things that I think, you know, as, as probably we all do from time to time, I look, I've looked at and gone, there's a better way for the coach to do this. But I tread carefully and sometimes go across the line where I don't want to undermine that coach. You know, I want to, I want to support them, but there are some things I go, are you, sh- are you sure about that? I'm not too sure about that. So, and, and, I, and I hope that, you know, the, the coaches I work with now, you know, that they're always, they're not second guessing me, but they're always going to say to me, John, you know, can you justify that decision that, you know, not maybe not right now because of the, the fact we're in the middle of the game, but, you know, <laughs> you know, are you, are you able to, to receive feedback and, you know, and, and really understand what you're doing? Um, and, and again, I think the final thing to answer this question, I think it's also a great, it's been a great 
learning um, opportunity because you actually you're actually in in the huddle and you, and you see it from the player's perspective. So now, as I come to be a coach uh, rather than just the player, or rather than the player coach, I kind of go. I, I remember when a coach said this to me in this way, and I interpreted it in in such a way that maybe they could have said it a bit better or a bit more effectively, or maybe they shouldn't have actually said anything. So, you know, let let me learn from that and and take the good things that I do like, and maybe you know be aware of the things that I didn't like so much and uh, and try and avoid doing those. So it's um it it it's it's challenging. And I think again, part of, you know, putting together practice plans and understanding how those go. Um again I think I've been in a few situations where where the coaches that I've worked with have allowed me to almost do part of their role for them. You know, and again I think a good the art of any any leader is is your your skill at delegation from time to time. Um, yeah, and, and they, oh, wait, let me stop real quick, John. The one thing that you talked about practice plans, right? The one thing that frustrates yeah. me as a coach, no matter, I mean, listen, if, if someone's running a camp or someone's running something, I'm okay with everything, right? But I have to have a yeah. practice plan. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like you you agree the same thing. I, I'm just thinking it's funny how people go to these camps and these coaches that are at this camp, they don't give you what they're so, oh, I know this stuff. I know this stuff, or I don't need a practice plan. You need a practice plan because you never know when something's going to change. And I think that's very vital in that stuff. I didn't mean to cut you off, but go ahead, continue what you're saying. Yeah, no, I think I think I think if, if, if you'd have if you'd have spoken with me fifteen years ago as a coach, I th- and I and I still have, you know, some of these these on, on file on my on my computer on a hard drive. But you know, I was I was I was the coach in in the team that would put that together and would be very rigorous and methodical in what we would do um i think from my experience and and i and i i guess my uh eureka moment was as a parent and and you know what this is like you know a a plan doesn't survive a plan doesn't survive first contact with the with the enemy or with with your team and so so now my approach is very much trying to identify some element of structure um, and, and I say this every single week to the, to, the, to the coaches that I work with, be aware that this is just a plan. And actually, if, if I see something that I think we need to focus on or, you know, or we need to adjust it because of, of the weather or because of the, the tempo that the players are putting in, then be prepared to be thrown a bit of a curveball because ultimately that's, that's what happens in games. And I want to prepare the coaches um, as well as the players for what happens in games. And, you know, we, 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 we don't go out, you know, everyone knows this. We don't go out there in games and go, right, I'm going to script my first 15 plays or however many, um, and, and it's going to be up against these, these fronts and these coverages, and this is what the defense is going to do. And so throw the ball here or pick this or block there. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of chaotic, isn't it? So I'm trying very much in, in I guess, my developed, my evolved approach now to try and put less, direct content into the plan, delegating a lot of that authority to the coaches that I work with, although I'd be interested to get their honest perception on how, how it's going, going thus far, because I also see that, but they're not always forthcoming for one reason or another. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, it, it, it is about evolving it. But again, I, you know, my practice plans have, have a, have a, have a pregame. Uh, we have a, a warm up. We have, we actually looking at some of the first ones that we've done the last month or so have some element of kickoff which involves some some shoulder tackling so we we're integrating a, a good tackling technique with with guys who maybe haven't played a lot of football um and then and then we've got you know we've got quarter one quarter two where we do some game related and some install work we go into half time which is actually not a designated everybody stop and get water it's more a case of right there's a bit of wriggle room a bit of flexibility built into the time we have um and actually coaches if your players need some individual work let's let's do it then and and almost take the approach of let's coach what we see needs correcting rather than let's give them a checklist of let's cover stance and starts and movement and contact and hand placement and eye placement and ball you know ball skills so rather than doing it for our benefit that we're ticking a checklist of things we've covered, let's actually do it based on what the players can demonstrate and what the players have, have learned, you know, and, and ultimately 
you know, if if they're out there and they're not doing a certain thing. So if our DBs have, you know, have dropped the potential of, of three interceptions in some of the skelly stuff we've done, then DB coach, uh, if you need help, I'll, 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 I'll help you. But let's do some work on catching the ball, you know, yeah. uh, because that's the thing that we need to work on. And then, you know, let, let's test that. Let's, I'm going to use the phrase stress test it, but let's test that later on in that practice. Or, you know, let's maybe come back to it next week because, you know, the, as you know, the true test is not whether they can instantly correct it and do it correctly when they know what's coming. It's can they put it into to the game context, which, again, is, you know, you know is, is chaotic. You know, you said something there, too, about feedback, right? My, my, Australian, my Australian coaches, two of them, you know, those, all those guys we had on our staff did an excellent job for what we had to deal with, with everything else going on, with, you know, being so far away and everything. But like Coach mm-hmm. Jenks, Coach Calvin, they would always bring up that feedback stuff. You know, they would get feedback, feedback, feedback. And then, you know, it's just funny how you say it like that. The one thing, you know, the one thing, John, you know, you know, I, you know, I write books. Well, I, I, I say I write books. I wrote one book. It's, it's you know. You are an book. author. No, no, no. Yeah, take right. it. You're an author now. Put that on your, oh, put on your LinkedIn status and the Twitter account. Yeah. yeah. What's funny is I'm writing my second book right now as we speak. And it should be done by April. That's my my date to come out with this April. It's a drill manual, right? And I know we talk drills, but I came up with a drill speed level, right? Because everyone has his own yeah. thing. So like, I'm like, you know, let's come over to drill speed level. You know, one is walk. You walk with the, with the equipment or without the equipment, you know, add a piece of equipment. Two is jog mm-hmm. with or without equipment, right? The three would be a zombie. The zombies are like the defenders are there, but they let you get through or whatever. Someone lets you go, right? Another yeah. one, full speed with rap because, you know, here's the thing. We say, we, I heard long, a couple of years ago, we don't use the word rap. And then everywhere now, Every company now, every company uses the word rap. So I said full speed with rap. And then the last one is game tempo, where it's live. Yeah. It's going boom, boom, boom. I think if you incorporate those five things, you know, and hopefully my, my, my drill book will be a lot more, will be a lot bigger, right? And it'll be for more people, for the women's football teams and men's football teams, yeah. men's football teams. You know, I, I think those five things, if you have that, and you're, you're, you're talking about practice plans and everything like that, that's very important to do. And, you know, with that being said, coach, that's, there's the whistle coach. So we're done with the kickoff question. Let's go to the first drive. If that's okay with you, coach, the first drive yeah. question I have is this. Okay. You know, the one thing I like about you and the one thing I, I, I I'm going to tell you, I, I stole it from you. You know, you always talk about how you copy stuff and everything. I actually yeah. stole this from you and I'm going to tell you right now, people, if you do speak at clinics or something, I would recommend you do it because it's awesome. You, you, but you do it with pictures, I want to say, with pictures of people's faces, like who you've met and who you, you worked with and stuff. All it's, right, yeah, my, my wall of influence. Yes, your wall of influence. And before, you, before you explain that, what I did was I took your idea, and I, maybe you – I know I'm, I'm telling you I stole this from you. So I'm giving you credit on national t- – <laughs> like I said to Coach Hines. This next year, this will be a TV show with your with your looks, John, and definitely, I don't know about my. I have a face for radio. <laughs> yeah, we're, hey, <laughs> no, like I said, we're not a face for radio. We just, I just got to lose a couple pounds. You're still playing, and you're playing at a high level. Me, I don't know if I could like survive like a one hit, you know, as a quarterback. <laughs> but um, the one thing I always do is when I speak at events, is I show everybody where I've been by logos, and I think that's important. But why don't you explain to the audience? Before I tell you the first down question, because then we're going to talk about a couple of people that we already talked about earlier, and I want to give a shout out to them because they're they're doing a great thing for the United Kingdom to size yourself, and you know there's yeah. more people doing a great job. So if you're listening and you're from the United Kingdom and I met you, listen, you guys are doing a phenomenal job out there. Football program's doing good. You know the one thing I wish is that we can build it from the ground up. You know because what I when I was out there, I remember those youth kids were like, Coach, we don't play football, and I'm like, What? You don't play football? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, we don't have youth camps as much. And I'm like, man, you know, I need to come back again down the road, you know. But uh, why don't you we do do. explain? Yeah. The, yeah, explain to your audience the the wall of influence. So I think I think I I don't know the exact place I got it from. Um, I I know it's it's been influenced by the um, AS, AFCA, the AFCA, the Africa um, Walk of Walk of Fame 
I think at their headquarters in Texas, they, they have, you know, kind of like paving slabs with coaches' names and coaches of influence on various benches and things. So I, I think I've seen this in a variety of different guises. And as I was kind of, I guess, reflecting upon um, my, my coaching influences, I thought, you know, what would be really cool is if, um, if I could kind of, try and collate this together and I and I've seen a couple of presentations who again I copy every every great idea is, is copied from someone. You know, every every all of us are cannibals and thieves to, to a certain extent. So so I decided, well I'll put some of the key people that, you know, have influenced me as a as a as a coach and a teacher, um, particularly in, in American football, uh, you know, it was just a kind of a collage and it kind of it kind of just got uh, all in all inclusive so um you know the, the the central part of the picture is is me with with my with my dad um so i was best man at his wedding to, to his second wife um so, so you know he's he's obviously been a significant influence both good and bad um in in my coaching career but you know i certainly know everything he's done has been with a a, a really loving heart and a positive intention that maybe not always been received that way but there you go um, uh, my first American football coach, Ken Gambrell's there. Um, a guy, John Tate, who I, who's you know a really good friend, and uh, he coached a, a team at the NFL uh, Flag World Championships uh, 11 years ago now. Wow, um, you know, and he got on the field at, at the at the Superdome. So there's a picture of him with Marcus Colston, um, and then just various other coaches. You, you're in there somewhere. I'm just looking at the picture right now. So you're hey, in there next I, to. I uh, remember Yoda was in there. Wasn't Yoda in there? Yoda's Yoda's there. Um, there's yeah, a couple of. Uh, I know. I think you sent it to me, or I noticed it. I forgot how. <laughs> I, I, I snuck it. I snuck it in there because of my my Star Wars uh, fanaticism, and you know, and there's there's a lot of wisdom that. Yeah. So you're you're. Uh, and then you know there's some Olympians in there. Uh, the the guy who's currently the performance director of Australia Boxing. Um, so I maybe should have got to hook you up with him with Kevin Smith. Uh, when you're over there with a uh, with a Amer- uh, America football women's team, um, Chuck in there, so John Gruden, uh, a big influence back in the late '90s and, and early 2000s, as I was, you know, I was this meticulous, detail orientated, and, and I still am. But but I think he really influenced me as a as a football coach um, back in back in that day. And then there's you know there's some there's some British coaches. Um, good friend of mine, Steve Perry, who you know allowed me to we we kind of really played off each other's strengths and weaknesses and and you know he he's kind of the the, the dark side to my light side and uh you know and, and we really did some good stuff and and just some 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 friends that i constantly run stuff by and then you know some of my work colleagues um you know some of the people i taught with um some of the coaches i've had in in soccer football um and some of the people that i've taught alongside and uh yeah so it's just it was it was almost just a way of of almost like putting a, a stake in the ground and saying, right, at this point in my life, these are the people that have really influenced me. Um, you know, some, some field hockey coaches are in there, um, some soccer, like I said, soccer coaches, a guy from cycling, um, and, and various other coaches who lecture in, you know, in sports science and coaching science um, and physical education. John Wooden is in there as well. Oh. Um, you know, so, you know, and again, I think, you know, that there's, there's been a significant influence that Coach Wooden's had on, you know, on many of us. So there's some really lovely stuff that he does. And, and, I, and I use his, uh, his uh, parable of uh, inch, inch, inches of miles uh, the, as, I, as I'm trying to reach over to it in my, in my study um, where I'm, you know, I'm getting my team at the moment to, you know, pursue moments of excellence. So inch and miles, the journey to success available from uh, of all good bookstores and online as well. But every, every week after practice, when I get home, I do a, a shot of a, like a, a door counter, a, a quick mm-hmm. account counter of how many moments of excellence that, that, we've, that we are, c- are accumulating. And so, you know, if every, every one of those moments of excellence counts for an inch, then, you know, in terms of, of, of our journey as a football team, you know, we can measure how many, how many yards we've got and how many, you know, length of the field drives we're, we're putting together. And, uh, you know, the aspiration is obviously just to keep that, clicking over week by week day by day and you know and and assessing and 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 making people accountable as well for, for the excellence so yeah so it's really the wall of influence is just a way to kind of say you know i really appreciate these people that have um influenced me and actually again as part of i guess part of an unplanned strategy 
it was almost kind of like, right now I'm putting a stake in the ground in my own coaching um, delivery and saying this is a way that I think now I would prefer to coach based on coaching science evidence, based on intuition, based on, you know, just listening to a lot of, of influences of, of people in, in football, in basketball, in judo, in fencing, in education, you know, and, you know, and, and actually just trying to, to package it in a way that not necessarily everybody understands, but, but in a way that I kind of, you know, and it challenges me, you know, as, as, as I put together my own framework um, and, I, and I've kind of drafted a, a one page um, summary of it, which again, I'm quite happy to share. I've shared it fairly publicly, but not massively yet, because I'm still trying to work it out. I'm on, I'm on about the 11th evolution of it. There, there's a couple of things. There's a couple of, well, there's, there's one thing in particular that's kind of tucked away um, in, in the corner of the piece of paper. And actually, the more and more stuff I do, the more I realize that that actually is the basis of what I'm doing. Um, you know, although although I'm talking about excellence and, you know, people first, sport second, player first, coach second, and understanding people's why, um, you know, the, the thing I'm actually doing, and I, I probably have teased a bit here, um, is, is related to something called the zone of proximal development, um, you know, which is about taking people from where they are and doing th- and the things they can do and understanding what they can't do and trying to kind of bridge that gap and be and operating in that zone where they can do stuff with you with help, you know, which obviously is part of our role as, as coaches is to, you know, is to help people to do stuff that they previously couldn't do. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, the more and more I, I work with, with the team and, and, and with the coaches, because this is both a player and a coach development kind of mission I'm on at the moment. It's actually saying, well, okay, you know, let's, let's, let's work out where you are and what you know and what you understand and what you can do, let's kind of benchmark you a bit here. And, and I'm spending, a, you know, the first few months kind of just doing that, which, which, again, I think has made a few people a little bit uncomfortable because I'm not doing the traditional stuff that they might expect. And, I, again, I'm, I'm trying to explain this to them that I'm taking a different approach, and I think they kind of get it, but not really. Um, so let's see where you are. Let's benchmark you, and then let's actually – stretch you and challenge you and expand that zone of what you can do um but but it becomes a very individual thing so again you know i guess to use a football analogy um you know if, I, if i'm working with the o-line i know that some of my guys can get into a stance and can fire out really really well so i don't want to waste time coaching them to do that i might i might get them to self-correct and to self-start and to, to do that you know pre-practice without my intervention but I want to work on other stuff with them. I want to work on their decision making. I want to work on their their hand placement. I want to work on their their ability to finish plays. You know, and and their level of you know of, of violence and aggression. Well, maybe not aggression. That's the word I'll come back to. Maybe later, but but their their level of ruggedness. Their level of you know how how they can do these violent collisions. Um, you know, and and I and I shared something with with the O line. Um, a little while ago and it was i'm trying to look at where my notes are it was so joe moore you probably listeners are aware of the joe moore award that's awarded to the best um o-line in in college football i think mm-hmm. in 2017 it went to notre dame so i think they've they've, they've awarded it three thousand yeah, and uh yes yeah. yeah, huge trope i mean <laughs> yeah, it would fill up my, my entire study just looking around here. There'd be no room for anything else in it. But, you know, there's, there's a quote I shared with them that said, you know, there's no greater joy in in life than moving a man from point A to point B against his will. Um, and actually, the, 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 the lesson in that is not about the violent physical collisions. It's about pushing people beyond the limits. Or, or actually, as, as you and you'll know where this has come from, it's about pulling people beyond mm-hmm. their limits you know it's, it's both Don't pushing push, and pulling push and, and using pull, right? push and pull. yeah so it's using using that approach that dual approach to actually stretch what people can do and to challenge them and to and again to you know to to have a level of and i and i understand the the challenge of this particularly with a, a such a complex yet simple sport as football but the numbers of, of bodies that we deal with number of people that we deal with they're not bodies they're people um but you know it's trying to say right okay well i've got i've got an o-line group or any other positional group, but they're all different. They're all at different stages, and I need to try and get them to a minimal acceptable level, but I equally need to stretch and challenge, you, just as you would do in your physical education classes. You know, and Correct. again, I think there's, there's a, a massive 
gap in in coaches understanding and delivery of of that and again i think i said this earlier on you know certainly one of the things i'm trying to avoid is is being a checklist coach and and that's okay i I totally understand that because i've been through that and i think sometimes you have to you have to go through that process to kind of work out that you know some stuff and that you can deliver some stuff effectively but I, I, again I just think there's a slightly better way to do it um, but yeah it's understanding that everyone is progressing at their own individual way and coaches do a great job you know again I'm not being negative about what coaches do but they do a great job of understanding you know what motivates individuals and how again you can push and pull people according to to you know what what their preferences are or sometimes what they don't like but again it's just understanding that you know we're all challenging ourselves in and out of our comfort zone that's the only way we we truly stretch and um you know it's something i'd like to think and i I probably say this every week to to the the guys and girls that i coach and and, um work alongside you know i i I, this is also a challenge for me there are things i'm doing that are outside my comfort zone you know i i film i film practice from a from a gopro on my chest um yeah. so that I can go back and, and review my own performance just in the same way that you know, we would film our, our team in various elements of the practice and scrimmage and, and pop that on huddle or, or wherever else, you know, and go back and review that. I wanted to be able to do that with, with my own performance and say what were the things that I missed, were the things that I said that I could have could have expressed more clearly or actually, you know, can I just stand back and reflect on stuff or can i uh, to to use a phrase i've stolen from a guy called um called mark bennett can i hot review can i you know jog or walk from from drill to drill you know which i'm allowed to do because i'm a head coach and doesn't always same rules don't always apply but can i move from drill to drill and give myself a little bit of feedback you know and a bit of a running commentary of things that i've tried or i need to adjust or you know some advice for, for other coaches that i need to feed back to them so that because of course I can't remember everything that occurs in in the practice um so it's just a you know a good way to review review my own performance and, and again hopefully I can go back well not hopefully because I, I will be able to go back at you know the end of pre-season and go right let's see how I've developed as a coach um you know and how I've changed and hopefully how I've become a lot more efficient and uh, effective in in helping the players to perform to a better level and to you know to to stress them being excellent it's half time coach we're going to take a two minute we're going to take a couple minute break and then we're going to come back and talk about the kickoff return question okay that's cool that's i think i'm going to make a, a cup of tea um because oh, that, that's oh, that's what english oh, people do I, I don't want dale i don't want dale to get upset but Dale, thank you for the tea, and I definitely do owe you stuff. It's coming, sir. I'm just trying to figure it out. So what was the thing he had? Babar? Is it Babar, right? Uh, to be honest, I'm trying to sort of check it out now on oh. uh, on my PC. But, um, yeah, Dale, Dale, I think I'm signed into my wrong profile, but Dale Bottom Dale. Me is, a, is a great coach and a great coach developer, yeah. coach educator, and a, and a good friend. And, uh, yeah, he came out with a, a way of making uh, – England, Yorkshire tea. I, I can't get Yorkshire. that wrong. There's a region oh, in yeah. England called Yorkshire, which considers itself to be its own independent country from time to time. And uh, yeah, Dale. The little pinky thing, the pinky thing. Remember, we had to have our pinkies out. I think Phoebe was one right. of us and stuff. But hey, Dale, again, thank you so much. And listen, any coach that's listening, besides John, I'm telling you right now, if Dale, I know you came over to the States for a while. But this is one guy in the United Kingdom that needs to come over to the States and get a full-time coaching job because he definitely deserves it. And his other, the people that are on his staff, I know he was a coordinator, I think, when I first met him, and now I believe he's yeah. a head coach. Is that correct, John? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it create like, like, hey, it's like coffee. I know he doesn't drink coffee. But cream rise to the top. And, Dale, keep doing what you're doing. Excellent job. And everything you're doing, great job. All right, Coach, we'll go to halftime, and we'll be right back, listeners, to the Coach Stone Podcast. The Big Four, a physical education book written by Coach Anthony Stone, can be purchased through the following locations, Amazon, iTunes, BarnesandNoble.com, and Kobo. Brian. $30. Hey, that's okay, Wendy. That was a good carry. You're still the man. You're the man. Latte. Ah! 
four dollars. Shake it off, Johnny. Rub some dirt on it. New piano, three thousand dollars. All right, guys. They're not saying boo. They're saying movers. Supporting your team. Right, Sorry, right, Bobby. You still got the best arm in the neighborhood. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's Mastercard. This is VCAP, right? We're back. We're back from halftime. Coach Stone podcast. If you want to visit my website, it's CoachStoneFootball.com. Uh, I do youth camps, X and O's camps, moms of football, parents of football, and X's and O clinics and things like that. I go anywhere. Just give me a call. Contact me on CoachStoneFootball.com. Coach, really quick, we were talking at halftime. Can you please tell our listening audience, UK, whoever's listening, the award coach Dale Botsam D1, can you please explain to them what he just recently won? Because like I said again, when I first met him, he was awesome, and now he's a head coach. But explain to the listening audience the award he won. So it's a, a, a website um, that covers uh, the British game and does a really good job of, of covering the British game. And they have a, a series of uh, Britball Nation awards. Um, they, they award Program of the Year, Player of the Year, Game of the Year, Team of the Year, and Coach of the Year. And uh, they were able to get some sponsorship from the Jacksonville Jaguars. And uh, Dale was awarded. He was one of several coaches who were nominated. Uh, but Dale was awarded uh, UK Coach of the Year. Uh, sponsored by the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, um, you know, the, the, the man has got immense talent, um, not just in, in terms of making tea with his bad, bad <laughs> raw, uh acronym, so where you boil water, add water to your tea bag in a mug, ideally Yorkshire tea, you allow it to brew, and then you remove the tea bag, add milk, 10 millilitres of milk, I think, to be precise, um, and then you wait six minutes before it's at its optimum temperature of uh, 60 degrees. So, um, and that's again, I think that's the attention to, to detail that that all, that all elite, high-performing coaches have, and, and Dale certainly falls into that category. And you know, he's um, yeah, he's an awesome guy. You know, I, he, he's I wish I wish I was coached by him. You know, my younger self, I could go back in time and be younger and be coached by Dale. He would be be awesome. Dale, hey, I know you're – hopefully you're listening. If not, Coach John, John Wise is going to contact you when this happens the day after or something to remind you to listen because, again, thank you for everything you do. Okay, so let's go with the first down question – I'm sorry, the kickoff return question, Coach. Um, here's the question, ready? So we talked about him earlier, your coaching staff. Sarah is on your coaching staff, and then we also – Phoebe, now, for the listening audience, just so you know, when I was down there last time, we actually did a race. Um, on these like toy, like tractors, and Phoebe won it all the way. She beat all of them, three guys. <laughs> nice surprise there. Yeah, yeah. She's she's not like she's like you, no know, competitive bone in her body. And you know, to mark a friend of mine that's you know she's dear to my heart. She's my true. You know, she's one of my. She was one of my. She was my first bat. One of my first Batman, Jen Walter. She has a book out too. I don't know if you read it, John, or you heard about it. It's called Play Big. I I read it. It's phenomenal if you are a girl, a woman's coach, a woman, a man, a men's coach, whatever. I would definitely pick up a copy of her Play Big Book. It's awesome. But the one thing I said to her that day when we were driving back, I said, Phoebe, just so you know, you will be the next Jen Walter United Kingdom because you will be the first international woman ever to be in the NFL. And she chuckled about it because we were talking about her business. You know, mm-hmm. She does that fitness stuff. And I, yeah. I don't know if she still does that. We, I was telling her, hey, you should get your own fitness line with your dumbbells and stuff because she, she always tells me she carried it. And hopefully Phoebe doesn't get mad at me for this. But I really meant that. When I first met her years ago when I was in Texas with the first women's games, that's the first time Jen was um, co- was uh, playing in her first ever indoor game. We went to go see the game, and I remember Phoebe was with us, and it was awesome. And then I got to see Phoebe again with the, with the international game, with the, the, the world game that was in Canada. In July, I saw Phoebe again, and she's an awesome lady, and she's she's great. So, Phoebe, thank you very much. Keep doing what you're doing, and you and Jen should come together one time and do a massive overseas camp. No offense. I think that would be stellar and be awesome to do. But uh, let's do this, Coach. Your coaching staff, what's it like? And, like, I met Sarah over the phone. I met her in person. I think she's phenomenal. I remember she got out of coaching. It was the worst thing I told her to do. I said, get back into coaching because she coaches the guys like guys, just like a lot of the ladies want to be coached like guys. You know, that's what Phoebe liked about me. She said, hey, coach, you, you told us to do it. Boom, 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 boom. 
but ex- just like explain your coaching staff. Tell me what your ideal coaching staff is. If you want to touch like how like Sarah's attributes, because she had a lot of attributes, explain to the audience that I would greatly appreciate of Coach Stone podcast. Go ahead. Yeah, so I think um, I think the first thing to quickly say is um, I feel a bit like I feel a bit like Noah. Um, in the sense that I'll take anybody. And again, that's not saying that we'll take anybody and we've got extremely low standards. It's a case of anybody that wants to develop themselves as a coach and um, help players to become better. I think certainly in the, the volunteer capacity in which we operate, grab them, grab them, support them, challenge them, stretch them, and let them know that you're doing that. Um, so, so we have a, a coaching staff that's very much um, the, the pre-existing coaching staff, and I said to all of them when I took over, I'm not getting rid of anybody. Entirely up to you whether you stay or go. I want you all to stay, but I'm going to stretch you and challenge you and, and, and try and help you achieve your why. Um, but to me, the ideal coaching staff um, would be a, a real mix. So, you know, there's, there's certainly no clones of John Wise in that. Um, I think, you know, to use the narrow analogy, having one is okay. Having two might be a bit of an issue. Having more than two, big problem. Uh, but a real mix, you know, of people that can bounce off each other, that can share ideas, that can challenge and stretch each other, that can challenge and stretch me. Um, but people who are willing to learn, people who are willing to, to lead, people who are willing to, to listen, I guess, you know, the three, the three hours. Can you learn? Can you lead? Can you listen? Um, and I think that those are the attributes that make, you know, a really good coaching staff. And, and I think people that are, that are empathetic of everybody else's situation. So a big lesson for me that I learned as soon as I took on the role was not to have the same expectations of the other coaches that I have of myself. So, you know, I'll be there, you know, doing stuff late at night as I'm up watching, you know, the NFL postseason um, and, you know, watching some of the NFL network stuff now the season is finished. Um, but but I don't expect the other coaches to do that because they have they have other priorities, you know, and and and, and that's totally cool. Um, but yeah, you know, people people that are passionate, people that are willing to learn, um, people that are self starters and independent, and actually can go out and research stuff themselves and can come back to me and say, what do you think of this, John? I've had a look at this. Um, what, you know, what those are the three things, John. What were your three things you just said to the audience? So the three, the three L's were um, people who, in no particular order, um, and, I, and I'm famous as what as much as one can be in British American football circles for coming up with acronyms. Um, so I, there's certainly not one for this. But people who who are willing to to lead, people who are willing to to learn, and people who are willing to listen. I think those are three really important qualities in a, in a coach. You know, you need to be the leader. You need to be the one that is accountable for the things you say and do and the decisions you make. Um, but you need to listen, you know, and again, in part of my practice planning, um, I've heard coaches who have asked for certain things and I've said, no, we're not going to do that. I totally have heard you and respect you, your view, but we're not going to do that because of what I know based on, you know, my background. And, um, and then, you know, then I just practice a little bit to allow them to get a bit of what they want. And it's not a compromise. It's by no means, and I, because I think a compromise sometimes makes both parties unhappy. Um, but it is a case of, I have heard you, but actually what you're asking for works right now and is, is, is appropriate now. Um, and again, listening, you know, it is, it's, it's, it, I almost have a 24-hour rule that I impose on myself where, you know, once practice is finished and, and I get back home or if, I've, if I'm prepared enough to be able to do that from, from my phone in the car park, I'll post up on our team Facebook groups, you know, any feedback from today. And, and I won't comment or I'll try not to comment on the feedback that comes in till at least mm-hmm. the following day. So, so players feel like they can talk and they don't feel like I'm, I'm then just trying to justify what we've done so that they, you know, and, and to try and shut the conversation down. So I'm kind of saying, you know, you have carte blanche to say what you like. And, and if it's really, you know, something that I'm not happy with, I'll obviously deal with that privately with you. But, you know, go ahead and offer your feedback. And I, and I am listening. And, you know, I think, I think the players have kind of have un- understand or are beginning to to understand more now that you know when when I sh- when I show them and I share with them elements of the the practice plan not all the time because I again I like to keep them on their toes a little bit I'll say you know this this thing here that we've got 
Um, so I'm just trying to look at something on my on my actual practice plan that I have in front of me, my, my risk coach. Um, for this thing here that you've, you've asked about, mm-hmm. that word's there. So it's there as a reminder for me to do it, you know, and actually I've listened and I've seen and I've responded. And that's actually, you know, I'm not just, again, I'm not just plucking this week's plan out of the air. I'm doing it based on my observations and your observations on how last week went. People ask me all the time, how do you see things so fast? How do you do things? And I just say to them, I just write things down. Especially like you're saying, you write things down in a practice plan. That, that's insane. Now, really quick, I know we didn't touch base on this. Give, give like the attributes Sarah has. I mean, I could list them all day, right? And I'm sorry, Sarah, we're going to talk about you, but we're going to talk about you for a second. What, what does Sarah bring to the table besides, you know, she has big, few, like we're using acronyms, right? Because I know we both love them. Yeah. She has FBI. She has football intelligence. She's Definitely. one of those late. I mean, she is. She knows her stuff. Am I right by saying that or not? She 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 has um, she has been a coach, I think, in about eleven different sports. Um, and again, as I was describing my own sort of day to day work experiences, now I'm exposed to a lot of great performers and coaches and administrators in, in other sports, and I take and steal things from from each of those. I think Sarah is, is, is exactly the same mentality where she under she under she has an understanding of, of human movement and, and efficient movement and um, again what I what I really love about Sarah is that she'll be totally honest which is which is a massively important attribute um, and, and we'll you know we'll say what's on her mind to the point where she she sometimes probably um, self labels herself as someone who's moaning but she's not. She's just expressing her point of view, which is which is totally no, she's, valid. And um, she's good at what she does. I mean, yeah, and she's so she's so adaptable. You know, as I've as I've oh. put together, or as as the coaches staff have come together, I've had to move her and a few other people around to to put them in there in the, the position where they can best succeed. You know, it's a bit like putting together a team, isn't it? You know, you do that with yep. your coaches too. Um, and I and I'm I'm playing her out of probably her preferred position but in a position where she, she can play. The, the one thing I would say about Sarah is she can, she's so dynamic, she can coach any position. So, okay, going back to that coach. So that's great. Okay, so that's the, the kick return question. Let's go to the second drive question, okay, because we don't have that much more time for our listening viewers because I know I'm always on a time crunch they got me with. Let's just talk about a little bit about your favorite team, right? The New Orleans Saints, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I have to bring it up no, again. No, 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 oh, that's cool. A couple weeks, right? But or, yeah, you know, it's been it's been a little it's been a little longer, maybe a couple of weeks. But please tell the audience, and I think you said it earlier about it doesn't the one play doesn't matter, right? Because now you see the pictures all over Facebook where Stone Cold Stunner, you know, they're Stone Cold Stunner. Yeah. I, I thought it was great how the fans responded because he's a rookie from Utah. Um, he had a. I thought he was having a great season, right? Yeah. But here's the one thing I think you said best. You know, it doesn't make the play. That one play does not. I mean, it did to make the outcome with the score, but there could have been yeah. other things that happened. What happens if the Saints would have did that trick pass, right? The guy was wide open. Yeah, Willie Smith. Yeah, through. Yeah. Really wide open, right? So. And I and I think those those players, you know, will will go and self-reflect and we'll obviously review the game film and we'll go, if we'd have done this, if we'd have done this. And, you know, and again, it's, it's, I know it's part of the, uh, the extended Bill Parcells coaching tree. I know Sean Payton was, uh, was a, a coaching assistant with Parcells in both uh, New York and in Dallas, you know, mm-hmm. which Bill Belichick is, is part of that tree too. And he's, he's got his own little forest going on. Um, but it is that, I, I, on, I, yeah, I said, I said to, to, a, to a friend, you know, three days after that came, who, a, a colleague at work tried to be, tried to comment about it. And I didn't quite get his, his joke. And he, he had to leave me a note saying, John, I'm on about the touchdown. And I was like, I'm I'm just like Bill Belichick here. You know, we're onto the we're onto the twenty eighteen season already, you know, that's been done. I'm moving on. Um but yeah, you know, it I, I again it's it's one of those things and, and I think there's 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 real power in stories, you know, and, and I and I was chatting to one of our players and I said, The thing is though, for for that player, this this could really make him for for me personally, I played a, a sem semi final, semi final, uh 
back when I was 18, and I had a chance to make the game-winning catch and didn't didn't make it. Um, and for for years, that that was what drove me to to strive to be the best and to put myself in a situation where if it ever happened again, I would make the play. You know, and and it made me the That's person great. I am today. You know, but again. Good. But reflecting on the game, and I, and I actually went back and found a, a DVD and, and was able to kind of film two plays from it and share with, it, with this player. And I showed him the, the non-catch. But I said, you know, the thing that somebody on the, on the bus said to me um, after, you know, the emotion had died down a bit and that people had kind of calmed down a bit, it was like, but John made the play that got us into that game potentially game winning situation you know I caught a deep deep ball called a timeout instantly you know which was a bit of a heads up play for a a player so young to make and he and he said you know we would have never had the chance to win if you hadn't made that play before so and you've made plays all season and and it's the same with um with Marcus Williams you know he he made the interception that that allowed the Saints to be back in that situation where they were leading no one thought of that right no one even made a comment I don't think when that game ended they were just saying, and that was oh, a great really pick. Mistake. No one, no one made that comment. All right, yeah. coach, let's do this. Okay, there's the whistle. Uh, the one thing I would say to you is this: are, are the Saints your favorite team, or is there any other team that's your favorite team? Well, as I, as I've mentioned before, I I kind of grew up as a Raiders fan, um, and I guess I gravitate towards Marcus Allen, who could just do it all. He could he could run. Um, he could he could block he could throw he could catch he you know I know he was a safety at, at high school and was just you know it was just a superb athlete and you know apparently through a couple of connections I you know I have with uh, some former NFL players you know he's, a, he's an outstanding man too so the Raiders were, were my team and again it, you know the Raiders were one of the hot teams in the UK back in the 80s when when I certainly started watching the NFL and and I stuck with them through uh, through thin and thin through the 90s um, and, and then I was I was in New Orleans at the NFL Flag World Championships, and it's a shame they don't do this anymore with uh, with uh, the Wooden Warriors. Uh, my friend John Tate, his, his team yeah, you're saying were, that. Yeah, the, were, the, were the representatives, so he took a team over, and I, I managed to kind of to talk my way into carrying the team's bags and uh, doing a little bit of mental skills work with, with the coaches and the team, so I was able to go over. And I was stood in, in Foot Locker on Bourbon Street and Canal Street, and it's like Jamarcus Russell T-shirt. They just, you know, drafted him number one pick, and it was August, and he wasn't signed. And it's like, you know what? If I'm ever going to change teams, now is the time to do it. <laughs> and uh, I, and I'm from a place called Southampton, and our soccer team is called the Saints. Um, so there was that instant connection, you know. I know, I know when the Saints go marching in, that that's you know that was part of my childhood as, as from from the soccer team perspective. So it was like, you know, let's go to the Superdome, let's go and buy Reggie Bush replica shirts, and uh, and you know the whole whole load of fan stuff. And and again, I, I, Sean Payton was in the UK for a little while, although he doesn't like to talk about it. Um, with a team that, again, I played for a couple of years after he was there. So there's that tenuous connection. And, you know, I, I just, yeah, you, you, I think they're, they're a team that you can have a soft spot for and can like, unless, of course, you're, you know, a, a fellow NFC South team supporter. And there's several of those people I know who won't get mentioned right now because they support the teams. Um, but, yeah, they're just, they're, just a, they're just an exciting team. And, and Drew Brees is just, just awesome. He, again, is the kind of player that is so deliberate and intentional in everything he does, and he gets the maximum out of his, his performances. You know, he's just a, an outstanding man and player to, to watch in action. There's the whistle. So we're going to do this now, Coach. Two-minute warning. Uh, please make sure before we go, we're going to post your information, if that's okay. Are you okay if we post our, your information? Yes, I'm fine with that. Yep. So we're going to post that information, so we're going to definitely do that. But, Coach, two-minute warning. Got to make sure the game game's going to end because I know my, my, my Stone 5 is probably running amok somewhere and everything. I don't know if you heard <laughs> them a couple times. But uh, let's do this. Two-minute warning. You get two minutes to the audience. Whatever you want to say or leave us your, your thoughts or anything, I'm going to give you two to three minutes, and the floor is yours, Coach. Go ahead. 
Well, I guess I guess the thing from from a coaching perspective that I'd kind of like to just quickly talk, and and it's one of those things that I just I was digging through um, some of my football files earlier, trying to find my notes from our our our, our kind of pre podcast conversation. Um, I've put them in a safe place, so I'll, I'm sure I'll find them in a moment. Um, and I just came across a quote um, from, uh, I can't remember where it's from, I didn't write down where it's from, so I'm going to have to Google it, but it said, um, coaching is about connecting with people, inspiring them to do their best, and helping them to grow. It's also about challenging people to come up with the answer they require on their own. And, and it, it's from an article that was about how great coaches um, act ask, listen, and empathize. And I know I talked about listening a little bit earlier on. Um, and I, again, I think from from my own um, experiences and from the direction I'm going in right now, um, that, that to me is, is, is what I'm all about, you know, is getting that connection with, with, with athletes and understanding, you know, their, their personal life and what's going on and the things that impact them and, you know, and, and surprising them, you know, in, in terms of knowing names of children and, and wives and, you know, and, and, and involving their families in, in our family and our football family. Um, but it is about challenging people. It's about stretching them, helping them to grow and, and helping people to become better people just through the sport of football, you know, which hopefully is something that, that's happened to me as well. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think my advice to, to coaches is, you know, yeah, great. Know all of your technical and tactical knowledge but really get to understand people and, and, and get to understand how people learn um, to perform to their best. And, and again, I've used the phrase excellence an awful lot. Um, you know, help people to understand what their own individual level of excellence is and, and hold them accountable to that and, and work with them to, to stretch that and to challenge that and to, to develop that all the time. Um, that's really, I guess, the, the key message of the approach I'm taking. And, uh, and, it, and it's an adventure, I think. Um, it's it's a bit of a uh, exploration, you know. It's I don't I don't know with a team I'm coaching where we're going to end up. I I don't have a specific goal in mind, other than to you know well let's go down the road and occasionally let's let's make some decisions together or you can lead us to where we go. Um, so yeah, it's, I, again I probably should add in a little asterisk at the bottom say you know that obviously is dependent upon the environment in which you coach. You know, I, again, I work with, I'm very lucky to work with some very high-performing coaches who work in the, the elite performance environment. That, that clearly is about winning and losing. Ultimately, it's about that's how you get judged. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, even those outstanding coaches would say we're in the, the people development business here, you know, we, and we're just doing that through, through the ultimate team game. So, you know, enjoy, enjoy the adventure as, as coaches. C- continue to strive to, to learn and challenge yourself because um, that's exactly what we ask our players to do. And so we should be modeling that all the time and uh, enjoy enjoy the journey. That, hey, that's awesome. <laughs> Coach, <laughs> Coach, that is awesome. That's the end of the game. Um, what I want to do before I thank Coach Wise again, um, remember if you want to visit me on www.coachstonefootball.com, you can listen to these podcasts over. This is the third podcast. Hopefully we'll keep going strong. Coach-wise, we're definitely going to have a TV show like Coach Hines and I said. So if we have a TV show, definitely we'll, uh, you're definitely going to be invited because you are definitely a TV face. Uh, <laughs> I, I do want to thank everyone for listening to Coach Stone Podcast. I want to thank JC Hawks Radio, JC Hawks Sports Network, for having, for letting me do this adventure. You know, the one thing I always say with my quotes, you know, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday when I post them, is one of the ones I said is, you know, I'd like to be the first, like, to start something or to be a beginner or something. Because mm. I think it's awesome. You know, being the first of this, being the first of that, people cannot take that away from you forever. And I think that's phenomenal. It's great. Um, but, again, I want to thank everybody for listening to Coach Stone Podcast. Coach Wise, United Kingdom, I know it's six hours from now, so I appreciate you doing this for us. Um, you know, if anybody wants to contact them, please look at the things below. Uh, it'll be all posted for all this information. Please follow them on Twitter and everything like that. Coach Wise, thank you so much again for being a guest on the show. 
Oh, thank you. I mean, it's all, always awesome to talk with you, and it, it's always great to have a chance to, to to get out of my brain my own thoughts on coaching. So it's always a good. I'm, I've made a ton of notes here from from some stuff you said, and also from some of the stuff I've said, which has kind of surprised me a little bit. But it's kind of like really good to clarify my own thoughts. So yeah, and I'm really interested in uh, exchanging conversations with with people who you know want to know a bit more about what I do, and and I'm sure I'll be picking some information up from them as well of how they do things. So yeah, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. No, don't worry about it. And again, listen, we'd like to have you back on the show. We can talk some more stuff, talk more topics. We talk all the time. We like each other, things on Facebook and things like that. And by the, we, we got to talk before the Han Solo movie. So I'm just telling you that now. <laughs> so we definitely got to talk before we, that. Yeah, definitely. I want to thank everybody for listening to the Coach Stone podcast. Our next guest will be announced very shortly. And thank you again, everyone, for listening. Coach Stone Podcast. I